From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Dave DeForest reporting France attacks. French fighter jets have launched airstrikes against the Islamic State stronghold of Raqqa, destroying a command post and a training camp. It is France's biggest strike to date, targeting IS in Syria. It comes after the terrorist group claimed responsibility for a series of attacks in Paris. It killed more than 130 people Friday night. Meanwhile, French police have released a photo of a suspect who is still at large from the Friday night attack. The suspect is identified as Salah Abdeslam, a 26-year-old man born in Brussels, Belgium. U.S. President Barack Obama is vowing to help France in hunting down the perpetrators of Friday's attack. The U.S. leader spoke Sunday after a meeting with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan at the start of the G20 summit in Turkey. The discussion we had today, I think, was very helpful in helping to continue to coordinate the work that we're doing together uh, to help to fortify the borders between Syria and Turkey that uh, allow Daesh to operate. That's President Obama. The White House says President Obama and uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin agreed Sunday on the need for a Syrian-led political transition, UN-mediated negotiations, and a ceasefire to end the four-year Syrian civil war. The two leaders met for 35 minutes in Turkey on the sidelines of the G20 summit. Egyptian police say 15 African migrants were found shot and killed in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula near the country's border with Israel. Another eight migrants were wounded. It was not clear who had attacked them. This is VOA News. Lebanese security forces have detained nine people, mostly Syrians, suspected of involvement in planning terrorist attacks. Lebanon's interior minister announced the arrests on Sunday, three days after two suicide attacks in a Beirut suburb killed 43 people and wounded more than 200. Responsibility for the attack was claimed by the Islamic State group. A Ukrainian soldier was killed. Eight other soldiers were wounded as the result of fighting that took place between government forces and pro-Russian separatists in Ukraine's east. Sunday's shelling took place near the rebel-held city of Donetsk. Saturday, Ukraine reported five soldiers killed in attacks by separatists. Myanmar President Thein Sein is promising a smooth transition to a new government. He is apparently trying to allay fears that the military will ignore the results of their recent election. Thein Sein made the promise during a meeting with several political parties in Yangon on Sunday. Pakistan's military chief, General Rahil Sharif, is set to begin a five-day visit to the United States on Monday. Officials say that pressing issues such as regional counterterrorism and Afghan peace efforts will top the agenda in the meetings with American officials. General Sharif is scheduled to meet with his U.S. military counterparts, as well as the director of the CIA. The two sides are expected to review security and anti-terrorism cooperation. Philippine authorities preparing for this week's Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit completed security stim simulations and placed the entire country on full alert a day ahead of schedule. They said the terrorist attacks in Paris prompted them to start the exercises on Saturday rather than on Sunday. A Philippine National Police spokesman said the agency has not monitored any specific or direct threat. Here in the U.S., the National Football League stepped up security inside and outside stadiums as America's most popular sports league responded to those attacks in Paris. The U.S. 
Department of Homeland Security informed the National Football League there is no known specific threat. A report Sunday from South Korea's Yonhap News Agency says North Korea has declared a no-navigation zone off its east coast, a sign that it may be preparing to test a missile. U.S. Democratic presidential contenders are promising a more aggressive fight against the Islamic State group, but in a debate Saturday in Iowa, Hillary Clinton, Martin O'Malley, and Bernie Sanders, the candidates offered few specifics on what they would do. U former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton cast herself as the most experienced regarding foreign policy. In Washington, I'm Dave DeForest. That's the latest world news from VOA.